Hey, welcome to the latest edition of Table Talk with my co-host, Brad Lewis. By the way, Brad is our worship arts pastor. I'm Jason, lead pastor here at First Baptist in the great city of Fort O, and we're here every week. Now, we don't sit here all week waiting on you, but we do come to these moments where we love being able to share time with you. We call it Table Talk. Brad, why do we do that? Why are we doing this? Well, what we're seeking to do is go from Sunday morning's message and go a little deeper, a little wider, a little more engaging, mm-hmm. especially not only with the Lord, but with others. And so what we're seeking to do is to take the Sunday message, which we actually had in this room yesterday, we did. as we're recording now on a Monday, mm-hmm. and then we'll have it up on our website in not too long. And Jason, you brought a wonderful message Thank you. concluding the series about God's Word. And what we're going to do with Table Talk, with all of our Table Talks, is go to the next level from there, making it personal. How can this apply in my life? How can I take the truths of God's Word and allow them to transform me? That's what we do. Cool. Love that. Ingredients would be, of course, your copy of God's Word. And we've said this before, if you do not have access to a good study Bible, we are here to encourage and equip so you can connect with us. So here's how you can find a few things. Obviously, you found Table Talk. That's great. If you did not watch or participate in the, uh, the, uh, the service this past Sunday, our worship experience on Sunday mornings at 10 or 11, you can find the message on our website. So go to fbcfo.org. At the top of the screen, you click on Watch, and that unleashes all of the sermon series packaged together. You can also find Table Talk, and you can also find this latest hot off the press discussion guide. It's a PDF. You can download it or just open it there. That allows you to go a little deeper. It it lays out some questions. We don't have time today to go through every bit of it, but we want to basically set this up so that you can do that very thing. So your copy of God's Word, your copy of the discussion guide, you can watch the entire message from Sunday morning. Also, you can do this. Go back to that top screen where it says connect. You can reach out to us anytime, and that's where you can ask other questions. You can give us information. You could even ask and say, how do I have access to a good study Bible? We will make one of those available to you. We would love to do that. Now, Brad mentioned the series. It was just a mini series uh, that we've been going through on really how to have personal time with God. And we, we started out with a high view and an overview of Scripture and some things like that, the power of the Word and the value and why it is so profitable and important, how God has preserved it and superintended that we would have it. God wants us to have His Word, and that's important to think about. God didn't have to give us His Word. When we rebelled against Him, He could have left us in our lostness, but He has given us the ability to know Him, to know Jesus, to follow Him. And this past Sunday was very practical. We were just thinking about, okay, if God wants me to be in this, how do I approach it? Because like in my study Bible alone, over 2,100 pages, that doesn't include the index or the maps. It's a big book from garden to garden, from Genesis to Revelation. And so let's just be honest, it can be intimidating. And that really doesn't matter how long you've been a believer. How do I approach it? Where do I start? What do I do? Do I need a plan? Yes, you need a plan. And Brad and I have been talking about that. Just He is a young believer, man. Just good illustrations and practical thinking through, why am I doing this? How do I do this? And so how did you grow in your ability when it comes to being a good person of the Word, Brad? I remember, as I've mentioned a couple times already in Table Talks, these three young men, high school students, yeah. who poured into me as a middle school student when I first became a believer. Right. And they helped me understand the importance of spending time every day in God's Word. Well, I was a young believer. I was excited. And I said, well, I'm supposed to do this. And I began to do it. But after a while, it began to get just kind of rote, just something right. that I do. And I, I would kind of do it out of guilt because, well, they told me I was supposed to do it, so I guess I better do it. And I realized that doing that that way was just something to get through. And, and uh, 
my brain is odd. Half of it's very creative, half of it's very ordered. And so I'm always fighting with myself. And the creative side of me would find me going, ooh, this is pretty cool. Wonder what this one word would mean. Oh, I could really, ooh, this is a good story. But then the ordered side of me was going, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. And, and I began to find out that I was losing that fellowship with the Lord. And I began to realize that I'm missing something here. I'm just doing it because I'm supposed to, or I'm just getting through it, right. or I'm just chasing all kinds of rabbits. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I believe I heard someone say this, that when I go to spend time with God, it's really the opposite. He's waiting to spend time with me. And so I began to form this picture in that creative side of my mind of God sitting at a table waiting on me every morning for me to spend time with him. And even to the point where him going, well, I wonder where Brad is. I mean, he's normally here by now. And, I mean, did, did I miss him? What, did he come and leave already? And realizing that God wants to spend time with us. He wants to have that, that fellowship with us. He wants to have that relationship that we grow together. And that so helped me realize that it's not just something I have to do or an obligation or a discipline, but it's something of simply spending time with God and enjoying Him. And then not too long after that, I began to realize that it's if I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus, it became worship. Yeah. And I saw that not as two friends, which it kind of is because God calls us his friend. His word says that. But it was me sitting with the king of kings and him imparting truth to me that will transform me and me worshiping him. And those personal times are now times of worship, not just where I sing songs and lift my hands and that's it. But that's part of him taking his word and pouring it into my life. Good stuff. One of the questions we asked this past Sunday, very practically, simply is, why do we do this? Why would we encourage you to be in the word? Well, is it, is it, it, is a, is it a religious duty or is it a relationship opportunity? And to be able to personalize it, to know that Jesus wants to meet with you, yeah. he wants that relationship and that the focus, even of all the scripture, he's the hero of the Bible. And so really wherever you are, it's, it's meant to lead you closer to him. We've said this before, uh, information is great and we want to be good theologians. We wanna be good students of the Bible, but we wanna be children of God. And first and foremost is not just reading the word to be a better theologian. It is really to be a better person, to be a better follower of Jesus. And so the best that you can approach it simply is Jesus, I'm a child, I wanna be with you. Mm -hmm. I want to be at your feet. I want to spend that time in focus. So it's whenever, wherever. Like what we're about to read in Luke 24, probably one of the, the most famous Bible studies of all time after resurrection. Jesus just shows up where his closest followers were hanging out in an upper apartment area in Jerusalem. Jesus just shows up. They're having a meal. And they didn't say, time out. We need to get to a worship area. We need to get to a classroom. This needs to be formal. It wasn't any of that. It was relational and it was organic. And you might say, where should I do this? When should I do this? Man, it's between you and the Lord. And I would say you said it like an appointment. Maybe you need that accountability, but it's like you said, God's already waiting for you. And so it's whenever you can have that focus. It's wherever you won't be as distracted and you can really spend that personal time. Every time you open the word, and if you need a plan, man, we want to equip and encourage you in that. Sometimes it's simply, man, the Holy Spirit has already laid out the flow of Scripture. Maybe you start in 1 John and just Monday is chapter 1. Hey, that sets up for Tuesday. It's perfect. You know, I got a plan. There's chapter 2. It can be something as simple as that. And, and I will tell you, sometimes I go to the index and say, God, I'm just praying here. Where do you want me to spend a couple of weeks just going through a book of the Bible? I'll sometimes be in the Old Testament. I'll balance that with new. And the way that flows together, it's not complicated. It's personal and it's amazing. And we've made this promise. When you're in the word, just yourself, not secondhand, not someone else telling you about the word, not someone else telling you about God, but your direct access to him. When you experience him speaking to you, Brad, I know you have. We've talked about it previous table talks uh, and I've experienced it as well you will never be the same. You'll never get over that. And so let's picture that now, that, that personal moment with Jesus. Here it was more of a small group with his closest followers. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read this, 
Pastor Brad's going to pray over us, and then the discussion guide is all yours. So let's get into some content just for a moment. This is from Luke 24, and so if you're turning there in your New Testament, uh, just right after Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Luke 24, we're just going to read a couple of verses here, verses 44 through 49. Uh, Then, as Jesus was in that upper room, just spending time with them, then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Bible of their day, in the first century, it would have been the Old Testament. He lays it out right there. He says, everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then we see illumination. It's like a light bulb moment. He opened their minds to understand. He gave them capacity and he gave them discernment and wisdom, the ability to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah, the Christ, should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. And he says to them, you are witnesses of these things and behold, I'm sending the promise of my father upon you. Jesus was gonna send them out to do ministry, to plant churches, to share the word. But he says, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Now our discussion guide digs in to some of the content of what we just read. But as you step back and just picture that Bible study, it's very practical just to think about how does Jesus want to meet with me? How do I spend that time in his word? If you watch the full sermon, we give just a helpful acronym on some things to think about, the ingredients of your time so that you get the most out of it. But none of that is really inspired. It's just an encouragement. Ultimately, the big thing is, is what about you and the plan that you're going to have so that you will spend more time directly, personally, into God's Word. It's good stuff, isn't it? It is. It's All great. Right. Cool. Brad, uh, final comments or just simply pray over us, man. It's all yours. You know, this is, this is the essence of our walk with Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have Him with us like those first disciples did, right. but we have His Word right. and we have His Spirit living in us because we have received Christ. Mm-hmm. And what's wonderful is as we take this at His Word, mm-hmm that the Word of God says that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. To be able to believe God's Word is yeah. real, it's, it's alive, and it's right there for us, transforming us. Wow. God says, good for you that you do that. It's good stuff. Cool. Let's yeah. pray, man. Let's pray. Right. Father, thank you for your Word. Oh, we can never get over the, the gift that it is. It's, it's so precious, and you've given it to us as believers in you to be able to have it, to, to know your heartbeat, and, and to know your thoughts, and to know your ways, but so much more than that information, to be able to see the power that's deep within it transforming our lives as we learn it, as we read it, as we hear it, as we memorize it, as we meditate on it, it literally changes us. And Lord, I pray that everyone who is listening right now, everyone who is watching right now, that your word will come alive in their lives like never before, that it will literally jump off the pages into their hearts and they'll say, yes, I get it now and their lives will be different. Do that, Lord. We believe you desire to, and so we believe that it will truly happen. In the name of Jesus, make it so. Amen. Good stuff. Amen. So once again, fbcfo.org. If you want to watch more, connect more, reach out to us. We would love to do that. In fact, I think it'll pop on the screen if you just, instead of hitting pause or just clicking out of this, stick around for just the next few seconds. It'll be there. Man, it's great to share this time with you. Until we do it again, amen. God bless you.